Virtual Console Part 2 Buttons. Okay, so we're going to take a look at buttons on the Virtual Console. Part 1 here, I talked about the faders, explain what to do with them. I'm going to, on my, on my Virtual Console tab, I'm going to go over to page 3 here that I created, and we have some buttons. Now, these are also included in a frame, and let me explain a little bit about the different. We have a red frame, which is called a solo frame, and then we have just a normal frame here down here that's called independent. With this solo frame, any buttons that I push in here, it only allows one button to be pushed at a time. So if I have button one pushed, and then I go and put push button two, it turns off button one, automatically cancels it so button two can, can come on. Down here in this normal frame, which I called independent, we can have multiple buttons turned on at one time. And it doesn't turn any other buttons off. So what would buttons be useful for? Well, let's say that uh, at the theater you're doing a variety show, um, but there could the order of the acts may change. And you maybe have some scene lighting set up for each act, but you're not sure like what act is going to come on when. So what you could do is you could attach the different scenes to buttons and then just cue that scene up by using buttons. So basically do it on the fly, or what we call busking. Um, so let's do that. We are in uh, edit mode here. We have nothing assigned to the buttons yet. So let me go to my scenes. I'm going to double click on button 1. And it says there's no function assigned to this. And I can go in here and select something. And I can go say, OK, this is going to be scene 1. Click OK. And I'm going to call this scene 1. All right, so that button's been assigned to that. Now, one thing you do have to keep in mind, I just click OK, and the name has been changed to Scene 1. Again, you can change the look of these buttons as far as color goes. You can change the size of the font. While we're in here and this is selected, I just say Font. Now, let's say I like that a little bit larger, and I like it bold. OK, and then it comes up that way. So again, you can go in and edit however you'd like to go, anything you'd like. You can actually change the color of the buttons, too. If you like them to be a little bit more obvious, let's go back and say that, you know, scene one, oh, that's uh, that, excuse me, that's font color. We want to do color here, so maybe I want that to be green, and boom, the scene one color is green. So, very, very flexible. You, you can do a lot of different things with it. Let's go button two, double click it. Um, let's pick a function, it's going to be scene two. Let's rename the button label to scene two. I'm not going to do anything with the font or anything right now. Let's do one more button here, button 3. Let's pick um, scene 5 for this one. Um, and say OK. And I'm going to call this um, comic. And I could have used my other ones for different scenes too. I could have called it like magician. Whatever, like again, this is a variety show, so this way I know that my buttons mean certain things. Okay, so now if I go in run mode, I'll be able to just uh, click on these buttons and they will bring up those different lighting scenes. One thing to keep in mind here now though, so we're going to be re relying on the timing, the fade up and the fade down is going to come from whatever we assigned. So we'll go back and take a quick look here. So this is scene one. If we go to function, scene one, let's take a look at the fade up, fade down time, three and three. Okay, does that make sense? The scene two, which we selected, has a fade up, fade down time of three and three. The scene five has a fade up time of three and three also. So it's going to draw from these scenes. When you press the buttons, it's going to call up whatever has been recorded in these scenes from there, if that makes sense. If you need to do something with different fade times, then either go in and edit them. But keep in mind, if you uh, use these um, somewhere else, it's going to come up that way. Except in the uh, chaser queue list, they get to be independent timing. All right, so let's take a look here. I'm going to go into, uh, well, it looks like we have some stuff turned on here. i got to go back. Maybe some sliders turned up or something, because I noticed that we do have some lights on for some reason. Um, I don't know where that's coming from. Well, let's go on run mode and see what happens. All right, scene one. We click on it. Notice that it gets a green outline. Those lights fade in for us. 
scene two. It fades in. The comic, which is scene five, and that's a different look there. So, you know, this works very, very well for a variety shows, something like that. I mean, you could theoretically run a show this way if you want to, too. And as you notice, as I click one button, it automatically cancels the other button. So, again, in these solo scenes, in this kind of a frame called the solo frame, it only allows one button at a time to be pushed. Very handy for doing variety shows. Um, I've used this for I've had uh, groups like bands come into the theater to perform and have a couple different scenes and if I'm not sure what song the band is going to be doing I just put their song titles up here and I can just go through and, and click on the song titles as I'm going through. I mean they may give me a sheet but they told me you know we may switch around the order of songs here and the soloist may come up and do this song earlier in the set and blah 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 later. So this allows you to do, gives you a little bit of flexibility and allows you to do some busking rather than to have a set cue list. Now uh, to turn it off again just double click there um, all right, now the independent or the regular frame, this can come in handy too. If you're doing a theatrical show and there's certain lights that you know need to be on all the time and you don't necessarily want to include them in a queue because you might forget to put them on, whatever, here's where you can put them uh, in this section down here. So let's say, for example, um, we have some work lights that need to be on backstage. Let me go back to my functions thing here. Um, I'm going to pick out, oh, we're going to do a new scene. We're going to call it Work Lights. And these might be just lights backstage to help the actors find their props or something. So you're going to have them on very, very dim. So I'm going to go to um, picking some lights here. And I'm going to say it's going to be dimmer 3 and dimmer four. It's going to be those two. I have two lights that are going to be on backstage. Um, I can do my look here and I turn them, uh, make sure I put my check mark to activate them and just put them up just very slightly to give the actors some uh, light backstage and that and that kind of uh, thing so they can see where their props are on the prop table. All right, we've got those all saved. They're called work lights. I go back to my virtual console. Let me get out of run mode here because we're going to edit button A. We're going to pick work lights as our connection here. Click OK and we're going to label it work lights. And click OK. Now it's work lights. So we don't have them on the display here. We could add them in, let's just say. So that what was that? That was dimmer 3 and dimmer 4, correct? We could add them in. Uh, there's dimmers three and dimmers four. It's our work lights backstage, okay, for the actors to see what's going on. And uh, okay, so now we go into run mode. And if I click on this button, boom, the work lights come on. Now they're very, very dim, so that's why I just showing a light gray back there, but they are actually on. If we look at DMX view, we can verify that dimmer three and dimmer, is that 20, a value of 20, and dimmer four is at 21. So those work lights are actually on. And we can run. The rest of the show and it's not going to affect whatever's independent down here is going to stay on. It's kind of like an independent sub on a submaster on a light board. And again you can make this frame as large as you want and do as many independent things as you would like there. But uh, again that can be very very useful um, having that to um, as an option of things that you can do.